Hello, welcome everybody, and thanks to be with us today. My name is Simona Colombo, and uh, in Avantor, I'm responsible for the marketing of large consumables portfolio. Today, we are listening how to upgrade your spectrophotometer with the innovative mm -hmm. NanoCuvette One system. Before introducing the speakers, I want to give you some useful information. First, we will send you the recording of the presentation after the webinar. Second, during the presentation, you can submit your questions anytime. We will do the question and answer section in the end. To ask your questions, write them using the control panel, panel on the right. Your opinion is important for us. We would appreciate you could answer the brief survey you are receiving after the webinar. For additional questions or requests, you can contact us writing to webinar at avantosciences.com. Uh, Copenhagen Nanosystem is a young, dynamic Danish company that develops uh, digital laboratory analysis and diagnostics for the smart lab of the future. You will learn more during the presentation. Emil Hoylund Nielsen is uh, the CEO, and uh, Sangeeta Katri is a research scientist of the company, and they are our speakers today. While Vian Baker Shaker is the moderator. Enjoy pre the presentation, and uh, Emil and Sangeeta, it's uh, everything in your hands. Thanks. Thank you so much, Simona, for such a nice introduction. Welcome, everyone, to this webinar hosted by Eventer, delivered by VWR, and presented by CPS Nano. Uh, we are here to talk about upgrading your spectrophotometer from observance to sample quantification and kinetic study using CPS Nano products, NanoCuvet 1 and SpectroWix. Introducing myself, as Simona already told, I'm Sangeeta Khatri and I'm research scientist in CPS Nano and this is my colleague Emil Hoylund who is the CEO of the company. And today we are the presenter and we will walk through the presentation with you. So uh, let's start with the question for the first poll. Do you have uh, any cuvette based UV based spectrophotometer in your lab? We'll be very happy to uh, hear your answer. Thank you so much for your answer and then we can see here uh, most of you are very much familiar with the spectrophotometer and you have been using it in the daily basis. So this is, uh, let's start our presentation with the outline. This is the overall outline of today's talk. First, uh, my uh, colleague Emil Hoylund will give a brief introduction of our company. Then he will explain about the absorption spectroscopy, which is uh, based on the Beard Lambert's law. Then he will walk uh, uh, with you through the VWR collection lineup. Then I will introduce the label free spectroscopy. And then we will jump to the our product, Nanicuid 1 and SpectroWorks. Then we conclude with how CPS Nano products and then create one and SpectreWorks can upgrade your respective photometer. Thank you Sangeeta. Uh, my name is Emil and I'm with CPage Nano. So just a bit about our company. So it was founded in 2015. It's a, it's a lab tech company out of Copenhagen developing digital laboratory analysis and uh, diagnostics for the smart lab of the future. And more specifically we work with upgrading UAV spectroscopy across all brands uh, we work with optical modeling in the cloud for better performance. And then we also have our nanotechnology platform that we use to create these really unique uh, consumables. And um, we do this by selling consumables on one side and digital upgrades on the other side via our trusted partners and, and resellers. Um, and today we are with VWR in, in 20 countries. So if you have any questions to, to the products, presented here, just reach out to your local life science team at VWR Adventure and then they, can, they will be happy to answer any questions you have. Um, 
CPH Nano has won a few awards and prizes over the years. In 2016, we were invited into the Danish Tech Challenge program. In 2017, we uh, got the second place uh, at the competition of the Nordic Company of the Year within nanotechnology in Stockholm in Sweden. And in 2019, we got the Eureka label from the European Commission on our groundbreaking technology. And in 2020, we were exclusively, exclusively invited uh, to join a tech exhibition at the Danish Technical Museum uh, around uh, diagnostics and uh, the laboratory of the future. Um, here's a short uh, overview of our uh, current lineup. So we have the Nanocrit 1 10 piece box. It is a commodity, it's a dual system for label free uh, and absorption data, and it comes in, in various versions. Um, and as you can see in, in, in the top right corner, um, you can order it already today with vwr.com. Uh, the, with the ECN uh, 634-1176 um, and if you do that uh, the box will look uh, something like this um, and inside here you can you can see the 10 cuvettes and just be aware that if you order it that the um, it comes in two versions you just make sure you get the version that, that fits your instrumentation finally we each purchase of, of the Nanocrit 1 includes Full, fun full functionality to our other product, which is SpectraWorks, including all updates in the future. Um, and regarding SpectraWorks, it is its own product by now. It's, uh, it's quite fantastic. It's an online software for spectrophotometry. Um, and it is, as I mentioned, included in the purchase of the Nanocrit 1. It's drag and drop easy, uh, and all future updates, and I think this is really unique, is included in the price of the consumable. Finally, upcoming, we have the Nanocrit S. And the Nanocrit S uh, looks like this, coming out later. It's for particle size distributions, concentrations, etc. And then we have the Spectralink product, um, which is also coming later, together with VWR, which looks like this. It's basically an, an IoT product um, that you then use to connect your spectrophotometer directly to the cloud. No installations, much more secure data, um, and it allows a, a new kind of very comprehensive way of, of looking at data out of spectrophotometry, which is, uh, which is quite a modern way of, of, of running your spectrophotometry in your laboratory. All of these products that I just mentioned are made in Denmark. We produce it here in just north of Copenhagen in our own in-house facility. Um, and it's a high quality product. And again, I'd like to stress this. If you have any questions, just reach out to your local life science team at Aventa and they will be happy to help. Um, when we speak about um, spectroscopy and spectrophotometry, I think it's, it's a good starting point to, to start with absorption spectroscopy and B.L. Lambert's law. So B.L. Lambert's law basically relates the uh, attenuants in the form of absorptance uh, um, of the light to the properties of the, of the materials by which the light is traveling through. Um, so we have the absorptance and that equals the extension coefficient times the concentration times the path length and then plus whatever background absorption there might be there, um, uh, here denoted by the constant A0. So um, basically what we can see here is that if we double the concentration, we double the absorption. And what we can see uh, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the right here in the slide is, the, is, a, is a short graph where we have absorption versus concentration. And here we can see that there is a linear range where B. Lambert's law apply, and then there's a range where the system usually saturates. Uh, and this has been the basis of uh, doing absorption spectroscopy uh, for, for many, many years, um, and it works quite well in this limited range of, of linearity. Um, so the spectrophotometer is really one of the most uh, widely distributed laboratory instruments, and spectrophotometry is really one of the most used analytical procedures in, in labs. And typically it will be used for DNA, RNA, proteins, enzymes, and many different kinds of assays and other substances. Uh, in the middle of this slide, you can see a very short overview of how a spectrophotometer looks inside. So we got the broadband light source uh, to the bottom, then the light enters the monochromator, where we have the entrance slit, the dispersion device, and the exit slit. Then the light comes out again, this time as one wavelength, this passes through the cuvette with the sample inside where it finally hits the detector, typically a silicon diode detector, um, and thereby we can measure uh, the absorption uh, or the intensity at different wavelengths and create both the spectrum and also do single wavelength measurements. And this is done in a modern spectrophotometer. 
This technology relates back to the um, to World War II, where it was invented with the Beckman DU spectrophotometer in 1942. And you can actually see a, a quite a quite nice drawing here of it to the right. So this is the original first modern spectrophotometer from 1942. The big box in the middle, that's the monochromator housing. You can see the knobs on top that you use to screw it. Then to the, to the right, you got the phototube, um, which you use um, as your detector. And then in the middle, there are these accessories we put together. Um, and in the middle of that drawing, uh, just a little bit below the center point, you got four cuvettes and you got a little cuvette holder that we just uh, highlighted there with the, with the, line, with the red line. And, and this, is actually, uh, this is actually how it was operated. So you would take your four cuvettes, putting them into a cuvette holder, screwing the thing together, and then you would, you would operate it um, as, as, a, as a procedure. Um, and, if we, um, um, and if we were to, to actually see this in a more modern perspective, this is the uh, VWR 1200 uh, collection lineup instrumentation. And if I just shift to the second camera over here, I can open up the inside box of it. And here you can actually see the four cuvettes sitting here that you just saw on the original Beckman DU spectrophotometer from the 40s. And we can see how we're still using the same design, basically shifting the cuvettes across here. The, the big difference here is actually around the cuvettes we have a bit more space to take care of stray light. But other than that, a modern spectrophotometer like this one is heavily inspired by the technology out of the 40s. And, and the reason why it is like this is because it works really well, it's reliable, and it, and it does a great job at a reasonable cost. Um, the original Beckman DU spectrophotometer was used both to test vitamin A analysis. Um, as an example, um, if you were to do this before the Beckman instrumentation, you would have to feed your rats, then you would have to grow them for three weeks, then you would have to cut off the tail and measure how much um, vitamin A you had depending on, on the tail uh, bone structure. After the Beckman DU, uh, the protocol was simply dissolve the supplement uh, vitamin A into the water and then measure the absorption spectrum. And then basically you had your result from that. So going from three to four weeks of work down to about 10 minutes of work. Um, it was also used during the Second World War to establish the first kind of ground truth around the, the, the spectrums from the individual parts of the DNA. And this led to the discovery of the double helix DNA structure. And finally, this instrumentation was further developed into the Beckman near infrared and infrared spectrophotometer, which was used for rubber analysis, um, leading to, uh, to a very, very high quality synthetic rubber being, being produced by the Allies. Um, and it was a great thing for the war effort because it basically meant that the Allies were not depending on natural rubber, but could produce it synthetically and thereby have tires and other things for, for, running, for running the war effort. So huge uh, historical importance of this instrumentation and this platform. Today on the market, there are four instrumentation types. So to the top left here, we got the conventional scanning spectrophotometer. That's very similar to the Beckman DU spectrophotometer and the model I'm standing with in front of me here. First, you have the broadband light source, you have the monochromator, you got the sample with the quit, and you got the detector. Uh, then uh, as a bit of a later development, we have the diode array spectrophotometer. Here you have a broadband light source, and then the light actually passes more or less directly through the sample inside the cuvette. Then follows a polychromator, so basically an intern split and the dispersion device is placed after the cuvette. And then um, the polychromator then creates this rainbow of light. Um, and then this rainbow is then directed towards a, a pixel array CCD. And from this diode array, we can then have one color of the wavelength of the spectrum hitting one pixel and thereby we know the value of this at this particular wavelength. This of course has the advantage that you can record an entire spectrum in parallel. It's very fast. Um, however, um, your, um, your performance on the wavelength, your accuracy is of course lower than the conventional scanning spectrophotometer. So both, both systems comes with some cons and, and pros. Uh, as the further developments of the conventional scanning spectrophotometer, we have the scanning dual beam spectrophotometer, where after the monochromate, the light is split using a chopper into both sample and reference, and thereby we can take better care of this uh, background absorption A0 constant that I mentioned earlier, and, and the light is basically just converted to the same detector. Finally, we have the scanning split beam spectrophotometer, which is uh, it's kind of the same configuration as the dual beam, but at the end, 
We have two detectors, one for the sample, one for the reference. It's a slightly more expensive setup, but it does have its advantages as well. So uh, today a, a wide range of instrumentation types uh, is available in the market and as well as both accessories um, and samples. So um, in terms of cuvettes, it's possible today to get glass, quartz and plastic materials for your cuvettes. Um, and I, um, I highly recommend looking into plastic cuvettes. Um, there has been a lot of innovation the last 10 years um, around uh, just upgrading uh, the possibilities with plastic. Today modern plastic cuvettes goes all the way down to 220 nanometers in, in range. There's a lot of possibilities out there and I highly recommend looking into the, some of the latest development from the producers in the market. Next, in terms of wavelength beam height standards, in terms of beam height standards, um, there are two industry standards. So one is 8.5 millimeter and the other standard is 15 millimeter. Um, with this VWR collection lineup, we are, we are on the 15 millimeter standard. And then in addition to this, Agilent has a few instruments that are also using a 20 millimeter beam height. Um, finally, uh, standard path lengths. If you look back to the, to the Beckman, it used a, a standard beam uh, path length of, uh, of, of one centimeter, and that is also used today. Um, and as you can see to the, to the right here, um, there is a wide variety of different cuvette designs today available. So we have the 10 x 10 millimeter inner size fluorescence cuvette, uh, all the way down to the 2 x 2 inner, inner size fluorescence cuvette. So a lot of options today in the market, both in terms of path length, materials, etc. And I really recommend brushing up on this because there is still a lot of development going on in terms of cuvettes and new products are entering the market. So this leads us very naturally to poll question number two. Um, if you have a USB spectrophotometer, I think there was a lot of you who actually had that. Which brand is it? Yeah, so what we can see from the results, I believe we have about 29% VWR um, spectrophotometers out there, which is a significant market share. Um, uh, but the other thing I think is interesting about this poll is that actually uh, around 60 something percent of you said that you would just have other instruments. So that really tells something about a, a very diverse market, a lot of different instrumentations is out there. Um, anyway, if you are looking into uh, perhaps buying a, a purchasing a, a spectrophotometer um, and you are in the category with a budget less than 5,000 euros, then I, I definitely recommend, I definitely recommend um, going with the VWR lineup. Um, there's a lot of value for money here. So on one hand we have the WE1200 instrumentation, that's the one I'm standing in front of right here. It's an entry level instrumentation. Uh, it's not full wavelength, um, uh, but, uh, but the rest of the instrumentations, the UV1600 PC, the 3100 PC, and the 6300 PC are actually, uh, as well as the M4, the P4, the PV4, all full wavelength from 190 nanometers all the way up to 1100 nanometers, which is basically the full range you can get out of a silicon diode based UV spectrophotometer. So really a lot of data is available with this instrumentation. Uh, they use, as I mentioned earlier, the 15 millimeter beam height. So there is a cuvette just designed for that. So if you decide uh, you want to test out different cuvettes, just bear in mind that you need to choose the 15 millimeter option. Uh, and finally, and I think that's amazing for instrumentation, you can buy for less than 5,000 euros.
um, all of this has USB connectivity. That basically comes means that a purchase like this comes with a super nice software you can install and um, you'll have a very nice user experience uh, with this very high value for money instrumentation. Thank you so much, Emil, for a very nice brush up on the knowledge about the spectrophotometer and with, for the introduction of absorption spectroscopy. But here with CPS Nano product, we are doing label free spectroscopy. So I would like to give you a brief introduction about what is label free introduction, uh, label free spectroscopy. So traditionally, um, absorption spectroscopy uh, follows the Beard Lambert's law, and the spectrophotometers have been used to measure the color intensity on the y axis by absorption or fluorescent at a fixed wavelength. So in principle, if you double the concentration, you will double the absorption in y-axis. But with a, a new type of software and a cuvette which uh, has the optical filter inserted into the light beam and the spectrophotometer, now the measures of wavelength color shift in the x-axis at fixed intensity that is proportional to the analyte concentration or sample change in the cuvette. So just by now simply adding a photonic crystal in the cuvette, now you can upgrade your spectrophotometer and then measure the refractive index which do not require any coloration and it can measure the concentration of your protein um, in a transparent solution. So this uh, follows the Hans law and in principle here if you uh, double the concentration you will double the wavelength resonance shift in x-axis and you can compare it with the gold standard SPR system. So this direct level free uh, detection technique can now do the um, concentration measurement or sample quantification of biological samples and uh, monitor the enzymatic reaction. We will talk more about it in the upcoming slides. So uh, here we come with the uh, question for question number three for the poll. Do you use a microvolume system such as nanodrop system? And I hope all of you will answer this question. Thank you so much for your answer and we can see that 40% of you are very much familiar with the uh, nanodrop system and you are using it in a regular basis. So now here uh, we come, we talk about how we can compare our product with nano uh, drop system and how we are doing similar to them or what makes us different from them. So uh, for, here comes to our first product, Nanocubit 1, where we say like one qubit for dual measurements. And then we will start with a very short um, uh, uh, demonstration of the qubit. We will show you the qubit confirma confirmation. We will show you how you, you work, uh, use it in the spectrophotometer. And we will end up with like how this qubit can simply do the microvolume measurement just by using the traditional spectrophotometer. Thank you, Sangeeta. Um, so here you had our box with the Nanocut 1. Um, I'm just going to take up one cuvette so we can have a closer look at it. Um, and then I'm going to take it over to uh, the second camera inside the instrumentation. So here you can actually see, if I put it down like this, I hope you can see that we have a normal glass cuvette and then we have a photonic crystal that is sitting inside, integrated on the inside of the cuvette. Uh, now, in this instrumentation, uh, with the V1200 VWR instrumentation, the light goes from here to here. So, if I put down the cuvette like this, uh, the photonic the crystal is basically not in the light path. So, when the photonic crystal is not in the light path, we are basically doing a standard absorption measurement. We call it a side A measurement, a side A configuration. Now, if I take up the cuvette and I turn it 90 degrees and I put it back in, uh, now the photonic crystal will be in the light path and we call this a side B configuration. And that is the configura configuration we used to, to measure, uh, for example, refractive index. If you wish to do a full uh, free milliliter measurement, you basically fill out the cuvette uh, with your liquid sample and it will do the measurement. 
If you, on the other hand, wish to do a 0.5 microliter or one microliter measurement, uh, you need to apply a one further step uh, before you're ready to do the measurement. And we have a small video to show how do you do this. So you take the cuvette and you hold it horizontally. Then you apply your sample using a pipette on top of the photonic crystal, 0.5 microliter. Then you take a cover slip, which is um, included into the packaging with the nanocrit one. So it's included in the package. And then you apply a cover slip on top of the drop. Then you use the tip of the pipette to just very carefully place the cover slip correctly. And then you use the, then you use the top of the tip of the pipette to just very carefully make sure that the drop uh, forms a film between uh, the photonic crystal and the cover slip. And thereby you can now insert uh, your uh, nanocurt one with the sample and the cover slip into your instrumentation and it will work uh, and measure in exactly the same way as you do if you fill up the entire cuvette with a liquid sample. It's quite, quite easy to do in practice. Thank you so much Emil for a very nice demonstration like where you can use now the spectrophotometer to do the microvolume measurements. So here, if you see in the market right now, we have two types of purchasement. We have primary purchasement and we have secondary purchasement. So in primary purchasement, we have the spectrophotometer where the customer comes and buys the uh, spectrophotometer and they come after 15 to 20 years. In between this time, they buy some consumables like light source, qubits, power supply to uh, hold and sustain this spectrophotometer. Now, what we are doing here is we are adding the nanocubit 1 as a consumable and we have our SpectreWorks software, which can now measure the refractive index. Now you don't need refractometer and it can measure the concentration at low volume, micro, micro volume scale. So now you can do what you are doing with Nanodrop, you can do it by using the traditional spectrophotometer. So now we can say that with CPS Nano products, we can give new life to the old spectrophotometers. So uh, here at the nanocuvette with the photonic crystal in it can unlock the full potential of the spectrophotometer. So what we are doing different here, first we are doing the level free spectroscopy and then here we have the traditional like uh, uh, the working mechanism of a traditional spectrophotometer which Emil had explained in the previous slide where you have the source, you have monochromator, you have the sample and a detector. So the only difference that we are doing is we are just adding the optical filter in the cuvette and this filter upgrades the analytical capability of the instrument and give the, and unlocks the full potential of the spectrophotometer. Now you can do the sample measurement in low volume and then it can also monitor the enzymatic reaction and many more which I will explain you in the upcoming slides. So uh, some of the nanocubit one use cases uh, I have already told you, uh, ex explained in the previous slide, like less samples as needed for the analysis. You can do your measurements now down to 0.5 microliter using the spectrophotometer, which was not possible before. So the concentration can be measured for sucrose. It is 0.2 milligram to per milliliter. And uh, for uh, protein, it's uh, five milligram per milliliter. The second is we are doing the level free concentration measurement so you don't need to have color dye or coloration in your solvent so you can do the measurements in transparent aqueous solution. Another one is you can do the uh, you can monitor your enzymatic reaction with uh, your spectrophotometer. Furthermore as I have already uh, shown in the previous slide you can do the refractive index measurement and you can also now do the micro volume concentration measurement using the spectrophotometer. So now it is replacing the expensive equipment and saving a lot of your money. So we have talked so much about uh, uh, how it works and what are the benefits of nanocubit one but now we have some solid data here to prove our points. So here you can see the protein quantification that we have done with our product nanocubit one and spectro works um, uh, together with the spectrophotometer. So if you and we have done the uh, validation with the reference measurement which is which was done in Technical University of Denmark Department of Chemistry using Nanodrop 1000. If you see in the left corner of the slide, we have the micro volume measurements done on bovine serum albumin BSA and the data was run three times. So it's a triplicate measurement for all of the data you, you are seeing in the slide. 
So if you see in this uh, in the left side graph, you will see in the x-axis you will see the weighted BSA concentration uh, in well calibrated scale, and in the y-axis you will see the measured BSA concentration where we have the concentration measured with nanocuvette one um, uh, nano drop, and then um, uh, again the nano drop. So I will explain you one by one about these uh, data points. So first, if you see the dotted lines in the middle of this uh, graph, it is uh, the um, uh, concentration of BSA measured in uh, well calibrated scale. Then we, you have the red dots there, that is the uh, concentration measured by using our product Nanocubit 1 uh, Spectroworks with VWR 60, UV6300 PC. And uh, the blue and green uh, dots represents the nano drop data. Here you can see the blue dots uh, shows the nano drop data which is very 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 off from the theoretical data. But here uh, the uh, when it, it is not it is the known issue that when uh, as nano drop is very sensitive sensitive and can interfere with the surfactant and then it is very sensitive towards the cleanliness volume and blanking and then it is also like frequently you need to clean the pedestal as well so there are so many issues that can interfere your data so here you can see the data is very very um, very very off from the theoretical data so here in uh, department of chemistry they have made the uh, standard curve where they have calculated the standard uh, co correction factor and and they have multiplied that factor with uh, the data then they have calculated the precise data which is the green dot you can see which is near to the theoretical value so if you see from this micro volume measurement we are almost equal or better than nano drop in micro volume protein concentration measurement how do we do that so with um, the nano drop they are using the beard lambert's law and they are taking account the of the tryptophan and phenylalanine which have the uh, aromatic rings in them. So here with a refractive index we are taking account like amino acid composition in the proteins are the major determinant of refractive index in the proteins. And a refractive index increment value of protein is one of the important parameter for concentration determination including the biophysical characterization of proteins. So understanding of different optical properties and structure and function of this protein are improved by knowing the molecule uh, molecular refractive index. So here we have used the well-known refractive increment value of 0 0.1650 milliliter per gram for BSA and it is a well-reported value in the literature. And here we didn't do any multiplication with the factor. You have just dragged and dropped, dropped in the spectra work and we got the final data. So if you see in the right side, we have the three milliliter BSA measurement and we have say, done the same uh, measurement. It's, it's, it's the same uh, labels like the blue and green are the nano drop data and the red uh, is our data with nanocubit one and SpectroVex together with UV6300 PC from VWR. So if you see, it gives the similar pattern without the correction factor, nano drop uh, data is pretty much off, but with correction factor, it looks pr promising, like significant, you can rely on it, but compare with that data from this graph, you can easily see that the data with the nanocubit one and the spectra works with the VWR instrument UV6300, our data is almost overlapping with the theoretical concentration. I, we have done a more um, statistical uh, calculation here. Here we have calculated uh, the um, reproducibility. And if you see the reproduci reproducibility of our system with the nano drop, our reproducibility is more than 92 percent uh, and for higher concentration it is all, it is equal to nano drop for micro volume measurements and for three milliliter as well it has the same pattern and if you see the error uh, error is error measurement you uh, in comparison with a nano drop error is much more high for nano drop when you don't use the correction factor but when you use the correction factor like it is almost 40 percent uh, in micro volume and in like three milliliter measurement as well but when you add that correction when you multiply with that correction factor the data looks better but it is still uh, almost 20 percent off for some of them 
However, in another side, if you see our data, which is the red line there, is like so much consistent and the error is like in average 5% for like for both micro volume and three milliliter measurement. So uh, overall, Nanodrop is an amazing breakthrough for protein concentration measurement and many more, but uh, it has its one weakness and it has its one benefits. Here you can see like there have been so many development happened in last few years in uh, the field of uh, research especially for uh, sample quantification. We have calometric assay, qubit, spectroscopy, all of them have their advantage and disadvantage. Some of them are very expensive, but you can get a great data out of it. Some are very cheap, but you get like okay data with it. So some of them can do very low concentration measurement. Some of them can do higher concentration measurement. But here with just the nanocubit one, qubit with the optical filter in it and a spectra wax along with the spectrophotometer we are here with the full package where you don't need to calibrate your system where it has high precise highly precise very accurate and it can do the measurement from five milligram per milliliter of, uh, to uh, more than like 200 milligram per milliliter for proteins and it has cloud-based analysis so you can easily you don't need to download um, the um, uh, software in your computer you can easily go online and then drag and drop your data and then have a secure data storage in your cloud. And it is very cheap, fast and easy to use. So, it... yeah, so um, <laughs> just just uh, one more comment, basically, uh, to what Sangeeta just said about the cost here. Um, if you if you if you were in the market to buy an Enerdrop system, you're typically looking at a price in excess of 10,000 euros to, to buy an instrument. Um, and that has to be compared to, to our cost here of less than 20 euros per, per nanocubit. And I believe that the list price uh, in most countries with VWR Venter is around 17 euros per piece. And bearing in mind that these cubits often can be, can be reused, you are, you are talking a measurement price all the way down to 0 0.02 euros per measurement, which is quite, quite, um, quite affordable. Um, I also like to highlight here in terms of training, um, you know, we have unskilled and skilled people already using this system today. A lot of our customers today are actually universities or even high schools um, where the teachers basically give this system to the students and then they can on their own can actually run it. So I would say in terms of level of expertise needed here, it's so easy to get started. It's very easy to do. And if something breaks, it's, it's not really a problem. So we have a lot of customers who are really benefiting from this. I should say that if you want really high accuracy result, of course, it also depends on the spectrophotometer optics. I mean, if you buy a, a little bit more expensive spectrophotometer, you might get a little bit better data. Um, and then finally, if you uh, reuse the cuvettes, you should be aware that this depends both on the sample type as well as the cleaning. So now we are going to shift gear a little bit and, and talk about the second uh, topic for today, which is SpectraWorks, a way to upgrade your spectrophotometer with, with software. Uh, SpectraWorks is our online cloud-based software. It's the first of its kind. Uh, really taking advantage of all the wonderful digital opportunities out there in terms of, of cloud computing, etc. Um, so in order to, uh, to get to this, um, we can open it. Um, and the easiest way to do this is to go to our website, cpagenano.com, and basically click on login in the top right corner. There we uh, log in, and, and in order to do this, you need a profile. It's very easy to set up. You click sign in and you're basically uh, sent to your, your page in SpectraWorks. Here you can go to the top and you can click on switch project. Um, and now you can, uh, you can see a, a menu where it's possible to make a new project. Here we're going to click new. And now you can see um, the possibilities. And while Sankita is typing in the name of our new project, I'd like to just briefly mention all the possibilities here. This is the first system that really allows you to take full advantage of the spectral data available, uh, the possibilities with a spectrophotometer. So here there's a number of different possibilities. There's data quality parameters, scattering parameters, data quality, sample properties. And all of these possibilities uh, are basically possible to just add and remove again. So 
depending on what your needs are, it's a very flexible system of getting your work done. Here we're going to add protein concentration. And now it's going to ask what is the background. And then it's going to ask for the specific refractive increment. The data we're going to show you in just a moment is based on uh, BSA. And for this, uh, it's well known in literature and it's also described in our knowledge base that the value is 0 0.1650 uh, for the refractive in increment. And that's a standard uh, well described and it's the same in every lab around the world. So you don't need a correction factor here like you do with the nanodrop system. We're going to add, click add to, to project and then we're going to click create and then we are ready to start measuring. Um, we click create in the top left corner and now we have, we, are, we, are, um, we have two options. So option number one is the basic curvette over here. This is if you want to use SpectraWorks for normal curvettes and run that as, as, as well. You can do absorption spectroscopy, you can do attenuance. OD measurements. Um, to the right, you can do with the nanocrit series, you can do nanocrit 1, label free spectroscopy, um, and we're going to click on that. And that basically brings us to the screen where we enter the box code. Now, if we look at, at a box like this, um, you can see it here. The box code is actually placed on the back down here, so you can see it here. Um, and it's also inside the lid in case you, uh, you throw away the other one. Uh, and if you also throw that away, <laughs> uh, it's actually also um, inside uh, each cuvette. So I'm just going to take it over here and just open here. So if I take a cuvette like this, I hope you can see that up here there is a uh, and then there's an engraving with both the box code and the cuvette number. So so each cuvette has individual calibration that will always follow the cuvette. And this is one of the tricks that really allows us using uh, the latest uh, tech developments in production to actually give you such a good performance and high quality results uh, using just a spectrophotometer. The trick is really, really here. Um, yes, so we're going to go back to SpectraWorks and just click oh, choose commit number three and, and go ahead and click, click item. In here we have a couple of options. So we're going to do a reference measurement here. We can choose a reference liquid. Um, there's a couple of options, and in this case, we're just going to use water. Uh, and we're going to drag and drop the uh, DI uh, um, water spectrum over. And now um, SpectraWorks um, will just accept it, and then we can click Next, and then it will start to analyze the data. Uh, now what happens is that the instrumentation is building an optical model of the instrument inside the cloud, taking into account the scattering, the culmination of the light, etc. And, um, and based on that, it calculates um, um, exactly what it will take uh, to, to make these results accurate. I think it should be ready. It can take uh, the first time we calculate this full model for the reference, it can take a bit of time. Uh, but if you need to reuse the same reference for several samples, you can just load it and it, it will be fine. But I think it takes a bit of time here. I think it's ready now. Um, yes, so here you can see a spectrum where we have the data model and you can see in just below the graph, you can see that we have a fit quality of 88%, which is quite high. Uh, and that means that the system is well calibrated and that SpectraWorks understand all the different variables that goes into running an optical measurement with an instrumentation like this one. We're gonna click next. And now we are ready with the sample measurement. So here we first need to upload uh, the B side spectrum. And this is for 200 milligram per milliliter BSA concentration data. We're gonna click next. And now we need to upload the side A spectrum. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, we need both a side B spectrum and a side A spectrum. And as you can see from the side A spectrum here, it's basically flat above 300 nanometers. And there really isn't normally a signal to give you the concentration, but but um, but in this case, um, but in this case, um, we can use the side B spectrum to get the concentration. I should also uh, mention um, while the analysis is running that this data was done measured on a VWR instrumentation. Um, so this is a spectrophotometer you can buy for less than five thousand euros to do this kind of high quality work. Here again, we can see the fitting is complete, and we can see we have a fit quality of 88% and a refractive index um, that is matching the value we would expect. Um, as you can see here, uh, the refractive index of the water was around 1.33, 3, 
Now we see a refractive index of 1.36 and the extra amount of refractive index corresponds to an extra amount of protein concentration. We're going to click finish and that will then give us to the uh, resulting summary screen. Here we can see the experimental setup to the left. So we got the item ID, we got the box code, the cuvette number, uh, and the model. And we also have a small menu for sample attributes that Sankita is filling out right now. Um, and this is quite cool because it means that this system can function as a laboratory journal um, notebook in your laboratory. It comes free of charge, just use it. Um, but it's really, really well made. And I think it really can make your life in the laboratory much, much easier uh, using this kind of very intuitive approach. We also have a super cool note feature where you can write uh, notes uh, and it will be saved automatically with the data. Then we have refractive uh, index uh, with the results to the right. We, got, we can see the different fit qualities and then we have a protein concentration uh, result of uh, 199.07 milligrams per milliliter. And this 199 milligrams per milliliter uh, should be compared to 200 milligrams per milliliter, which was the value uh, given by the scale, and we can of course export the data. So that was just a brief introduction to, to uh, SpectraWorks, um, so you get an idea about um, what this system can do. Thank you so much, Emil, for a very nice uh, demonstration of uh, the SpectraWax. And uh, I would again like to stress, like, uh, SpectraWax makes spectrometry much more easier by just dragging and dropping. And the collection, storage, and sharing of the data from spectrophotometers have been very tedious. Like, you have, you people used to do it manually with hand. But now, first time, with the introduction of the software, uh, SpectraWax from CPS Nano, uh, this cloud service for UV with spectrum analysis can now automatically analyze the spectrum corrects for optical path and qubit misalignments by assessing 200 million calibration points and give back the results to the user all in less than five seconds. So uh, to sum up some of the advantages of the product of CPH Nano, Nano Qubit 1, including SpectraWorks together with the spectrophotometer, here we are doing the level free uh, measurement, so you don't need to have a good coloration or dye in it. You can do the measurements of transparent solution. You don't need to do dilution, no calibration. You, uh, you can uh, do the measurement uh, very concentrated, very low concentrated. You don't need to have a correction factor to multiply. You will get directly the result. And it's a standard equipment, a UV vis spectrophotometer, which could be lying somewhere in the corner of your laboratory. It's very flexible and the most amazing thing is here is the cloud enabled software solution which you can have the secure data storage and tracking and finally it can do the quantification of biological samples. So as a customer you might ask yourself what is it in for you? So as you have seen from the data it is pretty precise with the, uh, with the results and you can rely on this data. Furthermore uh, this it works with the existing equipment that is UV spectrophotometry which most of you could have in your lab. You don't need to download the software it's an online platform so there is no hasslement downloading making your computer hanged or something like that and the qubits can be reused multiple times and you can always in SpectraWorks you have seen the fitting quality you can always go and check whether you can re reuse or not so a minimum 10 times you can use for proteins and for starch you can use more than 50 times and it doesn't need any very special expertise it's spectrophotometer and it's just a qubit which has been there lying since like 80 years it's a very low cost and then very less time will be wasted of you so it is a very very helpful for your research life yeah, and, um, and um, just a bit of the benefits. So VWR uh, Aventor is now um, supporting this reliable uh, um, kind of system. Um, and you can order these cuvettes with your standard lab supplies. And you can use your standard lab purchasing contracts for this. Um, I should also stress like data sheets, technical briefs, instruction briefs, and knowledge base are all publicly available. Uh, just go to our website, you can find all of it. We are shipping across Europe day-to-day -day basis, and it's um, shipping um, and it's shipping um, uh, with the VWR collection lineup instruments. So uh, if you want to try it out, just order the instrument, and you'll get a free test cuvette. And finally, I like to stress this is a cuvette. It fits into your existing laboratory routines. It's just a plug-and-play thing. You you can try it out. 
So just to conclude, today we talked about the spectrophotometer, the, the sort of historical development of the spectrophotometer, more modern uh, examples. We talked about what VWR has to offer within spectrophotometry and we, we, we shown you the NanoCut 1, what it can do. And finally, we talked about upgrading your instrumentation uh, with modern cloud-based software. Uh, thank you so much for your kind attention and we will be very happy to answer your questions. Several great questions. First question is, is a modular spectrophotometer with a reflection probe compatible to nanocubit? Excuse me, could you repeat that yeah. question? Is a modular spectrophotometer with a reflection probe compatible to nanocubit? Yes. But uh, write us in the chat and we'll figure it out, but yes. So the photonic crystal works both in transmission mode and in reflection mode. So if you want to run this in reflection mode, it is definitely possible. And we have peer-reviewed articles we can send to you where this has been done. Great, thank you. Next question. What about spectrophotometer using 12.5, 12.5 millimeter cuvettes? Is there an applicable nano cuvette? Uh, if you use 12.5 millimeter cuvettes, that then you're usually referring to the outside footprint dimension. So the outside footprint dimension of a cuvette like this is 12.5 times 12.5 um, uh, millimeters, <coughs> but that still means that the inside is one centimeter path length. So that is actually the dimensions of the nano cuvette. So yes, you can. This is exactly the form factor that we have been using here. And this is the form factor that we are shipping with VWR Adventure. What determines the sensitivity? The sensitivity of this system is determined in, as a combination between uh, the homogeneity of the sample, of course, um, but, also, um, but also the performance of the spectrophotometer. So if you have a more expensive spectrophotometer with better optics, you can get a better sensitivity. Next question. Will there be a seminar on the NanoCubit S when it comes out? Yes, there will be a seminar on the NanoCubit S when it comes out. Uh, we get a lot of customers asking about the NanoCubit S, um, so um, we are working on it. If you are interested in becoming a beta tester of the NanoCubit S, just, uh, just let us know and, and, and we'll see if we can set up a collaboration um, before the official launch. Next question. Have you considered a well-played solution for using plate readers? Yes, um, as it is right now, we will not uh, provide this technology in a plate reader format. Next question. How does one counter the problem of air bubbles in the sample or pipetting error while using low volumes in NanoCubit 1? Yes, so um, there, there are two things there. So one was the, the problem about the air bubbles. The air bubble problem is a lot, a lot less of a problem here than it is in the NanoCubit system. Uh, so it doesn't actually happen that often due to the way you can pipette it in. Secondly, uh, regarding the exact volume so you're measuring on, on a liquid uh, face interface um, and the exact measurement of the refractive index does not depend on the volume. That's why we can use the same technology to measure 0 0.5 microliter and measure three milliliter samples with the same cuvette. So it doesn't matter if there is an error with the pipetting. It does not affect the results. And I think that's a great, great advantage of this system compared to the nanodrop system. Next question. Is there any limit on the SpectraWorks in terms of users and storage? Can it be used offline as well? Yeah, the, the limitation is it has to be online. Um, so you have to have a browser and, and this browser has to be connected to the internet. Um, there, is, uh, there is no limit on the amount of users. There is no limit on the amount of data you can, you can, uh, you can put in there. Uh, I think in practice we have a limit of, uh, of several, several thousand spectra and I believe it's about 10 gigabyte per user. Um, we have never seen a user run out of space or a user not being able to upload. So just go ahead and use it. it it's fine. And as I said, uh, any cost related to SpectraWorks is included in the purchase of Anacut 1. So just go ahead and try it out. See if it's something for you. Next question. What is the detection limit for DNA quantification from 0 0.5 microliter or 1 microliter? We do not today uh, ship Nanocut 1 for DNA detection. It's something we're looking into in the future, but we have not established a protocol for DNA quantification yet. If you are interested in this, just uh, write to us and let us know, and, uh, and then we can, uh, we can definitely provide some data for that. 
Next question. Did I understand correctly that a side beam measurement can be done with 3 milliliter and 0 0.5 microliter? Yes. Next question. Can a nanoquid be used for unknown protein estimation as well? Yes. Um, if you look at the incremental value, uh, today we were using the BSA value of 0 0.1650. Um, but if you look at proteins, these values are, are well known. And if you don't know what, what the value is for your exact protein, uh, you can use uh, the, the mean value, which has been well established in the literature, of 0 0.19. So that would be the standard value for most proteins, and you will get really good results. And I really, I really like to stress this, this, that there is a standard value that you can use and get reasonable results. It's a great upgrade from extension coefficients, where it can be very hard to establish good values for unknown proteins. Next question. Can cover slips be reused as well? Uh, yes, we do that as well. Is the measing technique limited to liquids? Yes. Measuring, sorry. Is the measuring techniques limited to liquids? Yes. It is, uh, today it is liquid, uh, limited to liquids. Um, we do not uh, supply a system or ship a system that can do this for, for solids. Okay. Next question. Can the concentration of the protein be measured in the presence of colored interference such as dyes? Yes. That's one of the major benefits of this, this whole system. And I really think it's one of the points where it really shines compared to the non-drop system. Next question. Have you tried to measure on pesticides in water? Um, we've done some preliminary studies, um, um, but I, I do not have, um, we do not ship a standard protocol that is publicly available uh, where we support this, this use case. Um, we might do it in the future. Um, Next question. Can it be used for determining concentration of mixture of proteins like, like silicides? Um, yes, if you... Um, it now gets a little more complex than what we can explain with five minutes left of a webinar. Um, but there are some options here. Um, and if you are interested in even more advanced, complex data treatment with SpectraWorks, I really suggest that you just reach out to us and we take a meeting and we, and we try to understand what it is you want to do and then we try to see what we can do with, 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 with the possibilities in SpectraWorks because I think this software platform can do a lot. Uh, remember, we record a lot of Spectra here. We record both the absorbent side of things as well as the, uh, the full-on spectrum um, where we extract the, with the side B, where we extract the refractive index. So if you have those kind of more complex needs, just reach out to us and we'll see if we can establish a protocol uh, for you. Next question. Is nano cuvette scientifically validated and proved method yet? It's uh, scientifically validated in the sense that uh, it's, it, the whole technology platform has been peer reviewed. Um, this, uh, this whole technology is a, is a spin out technology from the Technical University of Denmark. So the fundamental work has, has a, you can find that on our website as peer reviewed articles. Um, and then, uh, in addition to that, we do a lot of reference uh, studies with various customers, um, uh, like the one we showed today with the Technical University of Denmark. Um, so if you're interested in even more data, just reach out to us either by mail or by chat, and we can certainly provide the data, uh, the data for you. Next question. How do you clean the cover slips and the cuvette for a reuse? There is a cleaning manual. Um, which, which clearly describes what to do. Uh, you can find it in the knowledge base. You can also find it on our, on our website for various use cases. So just uh, check it out. Next question. Can it be used to measure essential oils? I would say yes. Uh, we don't have an established protocol for it, but uh, on top of my head, I would say that that would be a very, uh, very obvious use case for it. Um, and here the benefit is that you can do it for a very small volume, right? Often essential oils can be quite expensive. Here you can do it uh, for a relatively small amount of, of oil. Um, and I, don't th I think that's a great use case. Yes, it should be, definitely be possible. Um, if you need help with this, just reach out to us or reach out to your local Avanta team and then they can definitely also help you. Last question. Yes. Is the... Can you use the nanocovet to measure the concentration of solvents in water, such as ethanol or benzoyl alcohol? 
Um, we do not have a standardized protocol for that yet. We do have a standardized protocol for measuring uh, basically the salt in water um, and, 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 and for establishing uh, buffers. Um, but we do not have a standardized uh, protocol for those two particular compounds. What about common lab solvents? Yes, we do have that. Great, that was the last question now. Thank you very much for all of the questions. Thank you, thank you all. Many questions. So congratulations <laughs> for the uh, really useful overview of and presentation. Thanks, Emil and Sangeeta. Uh, um, just remind, we want to remind you that uh, there is a document on, uh, I don't know if you, uh, you, you could find it uh, on, uh, on the control panel. You can download the flyer if you want directly. So just for your, for your use. And uh, just um, before thanking you for attending this webinar, just some uh, logistic information again. Um, you can listen to, first you will receive an email with the link of the recording. And anyway, you can listen the recording of this presentation whenever you wish. Uh, you can go on uh, wr.com. You can see on the top, you, you find uh, on the home page, uh, uh, in events uh, section, then you can enter the webinars subsection, and then you can find all our webinars already done and also the coming new, coming soon uh, webinars. Another in useful information that you will receive a certificate of attendance uh, um, the next day or um, uh, after the section. Anyway, if you have uh, any uh, additional uh, question or need any technical information, uh, write to webinar at avantosciences.com. Uh, thank you again for attending the webinar and uh, hope to see you soon again. Thank you. Bye all. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Have Thanks a very baby. good evening. Bye-bye.